everybody. So here we are at Rose City Comic Con and I am with the creators of Blood and Gourd. Um, one of the most underappreciated of the vegetable family is the pumpkin. Uh, the only people, thing people know it for is Starbucks and these guys are bringing it to a whole new world of horror. So this is Jens and this is DH and they are the creators and writers of Blood and Gourd. So I have to ask, where did this come from? I, w I would say it comes from a love of growing up reading horror comic books. Uh, just really, you know, we were lucky to grow up in the 80s when there was all these great films like Night of the Creeps, The Creep Show, uh, The Return of the Living Dead, uh, just so many great films at that time. And we wanted to capture the essence of when we were kids, where we would we would be so into these films, and we'd draw them, and we would just be so into them until it was time to go to bed, then we'd be terrified. And I felt like there was sort of lack of and we wanted to kind of replicate that again. So, Oh, and I was going to say, a love of Halloween. Just that, that time of year where you can do whatever you want that weekend. You can be whoever you want, and all of the great lore and fun that comes with Halloween. So we wanted to do that. So, do how much influence is things like Tales from the Crypt or Tales from the Dark Side to have into this? Because I, I get a really big Tales from the Crypt piece of the comics vibe and these magazines. Yeah, we, there's a ton, but we wanted to still kind of put our own angle on it. You know, try to... Because for us, you know, when I started Critic Show in the 80s, I didn't know what DC Comics was at the time. I was just a kid, and I'm like, wow, this is awesome. And then, you know, you kind of go down that wormhole, and you're like, oh, well, there's this thing, you know, there's comics in the 40s, and then you find out that more comics rolling back to the 1940s and beyond. And we just kind of wanted to get a new generation to be able to go, hey, this is kind of cool, and then kind of go back and we'll check out our new show, and, you know, kind of do what it did for us. And we wanted people to have fun, because that's, I like a lot of different work, but like Tales from the Crypt, it's one of those shows that you can watch and it's just good fun. Like some of the stories are really creepy and spooky, but it, at the end of the series, you're just like, oh, this is awesome. And the Crypto Crew is back. Yeah, and it always kind of makes it a little more okay, or you're a little more willing to watch it. And I know like my mom was more willing to let me watch that because it was funny than something that was just pure horror. So um, tell me about the plot and what this is about, because I know it's killer pumpkins. But what happens and where is this set? Because I think you said this sort of locally. Yeah, it, it takes place in Olympia, Washington. Uh, Henderson Family Farm has been around since about the 1800s, but now, unfortunately, they're going to have to sell the farm to Seminole Chemical, which uh, never they, don't, <laughs> they don't sound like they're up to anything, anything good. So anyway, they basically have to sell, and then it turns out that there's been all this evil stuff that's been going on behind the scenes there anyway for the last you know six months. So there's other forces at work besides just corporate greed that are trying to kind of summon this other stuff back into existence. So definitely like an HP Lovecraft sort of thing going on on top of that. Nice. And all that stuff kind of comes to the surface on the day before Halloween on, you know, on uh, Devil's Night. And then all of the characters, the people in that, are just regular people. We wanted to write something where our characters were just the people that would be at a pumpkin farm and would have to step up or get killed. So this is, you know, there's going to be a lot of identifiable characters that the readers can say, oh yeah, that'd be like me. What would I do? And then they get killed. Yeah, and then they get killed. So there's definitely that, uh, you know, even compared to like a Game of Thrones where it's nobody's safe. Nobody's safe. So I don't know if you can see. There's an eyeball. There's a hand. There's a finger. And yeah, this is some beautiful and Detail. gross artwork. <laughs> we have an amazing it. team from all yeah. over the world who worked on this with us. This is phenomenal. So where can people find this when that aren't here at Rose City? Where can they find it? Um, first and foremost, if you're not around uh, the Portland, Seattle area, you can get it online at bloodandboard.com or you can go to deadpheasant.net. Um, but yeah, if you're if you're in the Seattle area, Portland area, basically we're scattered around Washington and we're in, in the in the comic book stores there. Yeah. Awesome. And we're at we're at we try to make all the local conventions, but definitely the websites or Facebook page, Twitter. It's a really good way for people to see where we're at or you know how to get across. And uh, you said I believe you said this was a Kickstarter that you're on the next one. Yeah, so we actually funded this one through Indiegogo, and we were just successful with Kickstarter in August uh, for the second issue. And so we're hard at work on that now to get it out and get it just as high quality with a uh, you know full color, really uh, detailed art. Great. Well, thank you guys so much. Okay, thank thank you. Awesome. Oh, man, I love it. So thank you again, and we'll have links to all of that on FangirlMag.com for you guys.